Hello and welcome today. Uh, my name is John Mazzara with Remax Results. And today I have Artem Guskov. And Artem is going to tell us all about his company and roofing and making claims for the insurance process or just in general getting a roof. So uh, I've worked with Artem in the past. He's done a wonderful job. Uh, that's why he's speaking today. Uh, I endorse him. And uh, I'm going to turn it over to Artem real quickly and let him tell you a little bit about himself and his company. Uh, Artem? Uh, yes. So thanks for the introduction. Uh, my name is Artem Guskov. I've been uh, in the roofing industry for, I would say, probably five or six years at this point. Uh, started in 1617 and then just uh, went full in. To, 17 at that point. So before that, I was in uh, healthcare. I worked in uh, a family practice clinic and then uh, decided to make the big switch basically for flexibility and so on, getting a little more time with family, uh, having the, you know, the off season to kind of devote. That's, that's always nice. So I uh, got into it and uh, have had, I mean, we're, we're really loving the industry so far. So we've had good luck with it and uh, yeah, looking forward to more years in it. Perfect. So let's say a homeowner, there's a storm, you know, they, they think they may have damage, they, they don't know for sure. Uh, they call their insurance company and an adjuster comes out and tells them there's, there's no hail damage. Um, but everybody in their neighborhood's got a brand new roof. And they're scratching their head, they're going, well, how does that work? Well, I guess the guy said there's no damage. Um, what would you say to somebody like that? Would, would that be the first thing they should do is take the word of the adjuster from the insurance company? Or, or is there a better way to approach maybe making a claim for a roof? Sure. So that's uh, that's a really good question. That's uh, we run into that a lot, especially lately. And uh, I don't know if it's a, a budget thing with insurance companies, depending on when you file, uh, you know, throughout the year. If it's right after the storm, you may have a better luck at getting the claim approved versus later on in the year. Uh, you may have uh, staff adjusters who are coming out for the inspections, and those adjusters are tougher to work with. Um, basically, the general uh, rule of thumb is the, the main thing you want to do, even before the uh, the claim occurs, the hail uh, happens at your property. The main thing you want to do is uh, actually contact your agent and then discuss the policy coverage with them. A lot of the times there's uh, either exclusions in the policy regarding matching or there's exclusions regarding metals on the roof, like the valleys, the metal valleys that connect the roof slopes or the vents on the roof. Uh, there's exclusions for those items. So a lot of the things that are uh, generally covered with uh, some insurance companies, they may not be covered by your policy. So the main thing, the first thing you should do is contact the insurance company and find out what coverage you have, whether or not you need additional endorsements to get the, you know, the adequate coverage. So that would be the main thing you want to do before the storm even happens. Uh, another thing is you want to make sure you document the damage. So right after the storm happens, let's say it hits, I don't know, if it's in the middle of the night, obviously it's really hard to document, but if it's sometime during the day, you definitely want to document the storm. So get the phone out, get the camera out, record a video, record pictures. Some, some of the homeowners, some of our clients, they even take the hailstone and they uh, put it in the freezer, freeze it up, and then hang on to it until the adjuster you know, comes out for the inspection. Uh, any proof that you have, like take notes, take exact time, note of uh, the exact time of the hail impact, like when it happened, the date and time, it's very important. So a lot of the times the insurance companies, when we see denials, uh, that's one of the ways they can get out of it is if the homeowner files a claim for the wrong date of loss. So that's, that's one way for them to get out of it. If the report doesn't show it on the exact date, they can say that, well, the hail didn't happen on this date. So per policy, we don't have to cover this. So there's, there's a lot of ways. It really depends on who you're working with as far as the insurance company. A lot of them are great. Some of them are not so great. I don't want to call anybody out in this yeah. video. This is one of my first uh, public appearances. So we'll, uh, we'll keep it on the down low for now. But uh, it, it really depends on the insurance company. It really does uh, sound like you get what you pay for. So the cheaper the premiums, you usually get, you know, pay for it on the back end. Uh, and then uh, the other thing is uh, basically knowing your rights as the insured. So a lot of the homeowners, when they hear an adjuster is coming out to take a look at the property, they kind of take the insurance company's word for it, like you said. Uh, you definitely want to get a second opinion. If you have a lot of roofers coming into your neighborhood and taking a look at it, uh, I mean, it's, it doesn't hurt to have somebody take a look at it, document the damages, and contact the insurance company. Uh, it also, uh, it's good to know the fact that you, even if the insurance company denies it, and you for sure, if you've had like, let's say three, four different contracts just telling you that there's legitimate damage, you trust the contractor, you you know that there's something going on, all your neighbors are getting replaced. It's definitely a good idea to uh, keep pursuing that claim because down the road, it may cause uh, more issues if you don't. If you don't repair the roof and if you don't get it done, you may have uh, bigger problems later on. So uh, either contacting a public adjuster, that's one of the ways to uh, pursue a claim or having a contractor who is uh, 
very informed in the insurance restoration industry, that, that is also a good idea. So having somebody who knows the, let's say the appraisal process or the arbitration process with the insurance companies in case there's disagreement in the claim, that's always a good thing. Uh, Foremost Exteriors, our company, we, we specialize in insurance claims. That's, uh, I mean, it's, it's, the insurance companies are the biggest buyer of roofs uh, in the States. So uh, it's, it's definitely a good idea for roofers in general to be very uh, knowledgeable as far as the insurance claims go. So those would be my tips as far as uh, basically getting, you know, the homeowner the right coverage. So the main thing is uh, review the policy ahead of time. Make sure you are aware what coverage you have in your policy, whether or not you need endorsements, additional endorsements added on to get adequate coverage. Matching would be one of them. That's something you want to uh, confirm with your agent. Uh, another thing is uh, reviewing your deductible amounts, making sure you're not surprised by the out-of-pocket costs when a hail does occur and, you know, you have to file a claim. And then discuss the differences in uh, uh, ACV, RCV policies. Some of them only cover the actual cost of the roof. Uh, let's say the hail happened and the roof is 20 years old. So they would only pay you for whatever life is left on the roof. So they wouldn't pay you the depreciation, the last uh, life amount, like let's say for the last 20 years, they will only pay you the actual cash cost of that roof today. So it's a good idea to get the replacement cost value policy, which will cover you for with the depreciation. So you'll have less out-of-pocket costs when the storm does happen. So you really have to kind of balance it out. You have a balancing act of, uh, you know, having the lower premiums and then trying to set money aside for the deductibles or, you know, having the insurance company that's a little more expensive, but you get the adequate coverage right off the bat. So that's, that's definitely something to think about. And then, uh, you know, documenting the damage, making sure you take notes, you take pictures, videos, uh, document the date and time of the impact and then uh, knowing your rights as the insured. But, I mean, sometimes all it takes is uh, just a Google search, you know, find out what the steps are that you can take as a homeowner and then finding a good public adjuster who can represent you. Uh, we as a contractor legally, we cannot represent the homeowner. It has to be the homeowner who makes that decision. So our job is to inform, educate the homeowner. And then from there, they have to kind of, you know, uh, stand their ground with the insurance company. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Now, when they get a rough, uh, you know, some people don't know the difference between the types, uh, you know, whether they be uh, steel or, or asphalt or shale, shale, or can you tell us what the most common type is and maybe what, um, you know, uh, the difference in cost? Like, let's just say one with a 20 year tab versus a 50 year tab. What am I looking at for a difference in architectural shingles versus, you know, maybe just a, a flat, you know, Three tab asphalt. Shingle. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, the most common ones that we run into uh, in the roofing industry, that's going to be the asphalt shingle. So uh, the three tab, basically a shingle with uh, three separate tabs on it. Uh, that's a three tab shingle. That's what they, we call it. Uh, that one is getting actually phased out by the industry. So it's getting really hard to find. Uh, we have a few houses that we're working on right now. And the insurance company suggested a match for that roof. And that shingle, we can't find it within like 200 mile radius. We can't even get a bundle. Mm -hmm. So there's a new services popping up now who are trying to, you know, kind of locate whatever is left over somewhere in the country and then just send it out so you can even do the match test. Like it's, it's getting that ridiculous. So uh, the three tabs are getting phased out, but the architectural ones are very common. The architectural is the dimensional shingle. So you get the kind of a, a 3D look. Uh, and uh, I mean, as far as the age, uh, we go with the Owens Corning product, Owens Corning duration shingle. Um, biggest reason we go with them is uh, because of their sure nail strip. So it's a piece of fabric that goes right in the nailing zone of the shingle. And that prevents the nails when the guys install the shingles, it prevents the nails from going through the shingle overdrive. When you overdrive a nail, the shingle can slide right off. It's not going to stay on the roof for a long time. And you may see some roofs like you drive through, let's say Minneapolis, like the steep ones, very like 12 over 12, really steep roofs. The shingles are just sliding off on their own. This prevents it from happening. So when the nail gun, let's say the pressure is up too high or something, that fabric stops the nail from going all the way through the shingle. So that's one of the reasons why we use it. The seal is amazing on them. They stick down really well. And uh, I mean, it's uh, it's not the heaviest shingle available, but there's good weight to it. So Owens Corning Duration, we're a preferred contractor for them. We we trust their products. Ice and water felt, we use synthetic felt and uh, we use the their grade of ice and water. So we, we've had really good luck with them. We don't. We don't get much callbacks aside from maybe like some accessories causing issues, but hardly anything with the shingles. So that's been really good shingle for us. Uh, GAF is another big one. And uh, Certainty, we generally stick to those top three. And then Certainty, let's say the Landmark, uh, it's a heavy shingle, also a really good product. And the uh, GAF Timberline HDZ, uh, they have the HD, the HDZ, HDZ Ultra. 
they have a lot of different options. So you, if you need more information, just contact us. We'll be happy to go over the details with you. Wow, sounds like you know a little bit about roof sort of. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> uh, what tip. about a like a twenty-year shingle and a thirty or a lifetime? Is there a big cost difference to upgrade from, let's call it the the least expensive to the most expensive, and or just stick with the midpoint? What, what do you see cost-wise? We uh, with the insurance companies, they usually pay for the light kind. So if it's the three tab shingle on the roof, uh, you know, we we have to go with something that's similar to it. With our company, we upgrade at no charge to the homeowner. So we give uh, the own scoring duration. It's an architectural shingle. So we know, I mean, unless the homeowner really wants the three tab look, we never go with the three tab again. So we replace three tabs with architectural shingle. It's an upgrade. Uh, we also purchase an additional warranty on top of the, you know, the regular mm -hmm. warranty that you get with any manufacturer. Uh, and that lasts, they, they say it's a lifetime warranty, 50 year. Uh, mm -hmm. they, they don't like putting numbers on it. Now it's a lifetime thing, but 50 year is kind of the, the ballpark uh, where they go off. I'll be honest, uh, I have yet to see a 50 year old shingle. So <laughs> we'll see how it lasts, but so far so good. There's not a lot of granule loss in the shingles, uh, not a lot of blistering like some of the other ones we've seen. And they seem to be holding up okay. Not a lot of uh, like, you know, you, you, on the older roofs, you start to see fiberglass getting exposed, the granules will fall right off. Uh, some homeowners may notice, you know, the downspout, the water drains out like after it rains, every time there's some granules on. With Owen's Corning, the granules are really stuck well into the mat, so we haven't seen that issue. They're, it's really holding up nice. Nice, nice. Yep. Well, that sounds uh, great. Oh, another thing I was going to mention to you, uh, we recently started working, so uh, there's a lot of cedar shake roofs in Minnesota. Uh, mm -hmm. We have been working with uh, some synthetic products lately. Uh, da Vinci is one of them, uh, and we're really starting to like it. So with, uh, let's say, Dyna Homes, uh, they've had the storm last year. That was a really high-impact storm, large hailstones, and a lot of uh, homeowners got their roofs replaced. Cedar shake roofs, they were damaged enough to get replaced. Uh, the only problem is cedar shake roofs in Minnesota don't tend to last as long as uh, you know some of the other states because of the severe, the severe uh, weather changes. So getting... Uh, different options uh, or keeping an open mind, you know, as far as getting replacements, that might be a good idea. That's our suggestion. So maybe consider some synthetic options, take a look at DaVinci products or something similar. It doesn't necessarily have to be an asphalt shingle. A lot of the contractors, they just kind of go the easy route. They'll say, well, you have a cedar shake. We'll just, you know, kind of refund you some money back and then you'll go with uh, like a, just a regular asphalt shingle. Well, it's, it's, a, it's a downgrade, it really is. And then you're losing quite a bit of value on the house as well. I'm, I'm sure you're, you're familiar with that. And uh, yeah, going with something that's equal to the cedar shake as far as the quality goes and the longevity of the actual product, that's definitely uh, worth considering. Excellent, excellent. Well, I know uh, I kind of, you know, walk around a home, look for damage when I'm before I list a home and, uh, you know, want to make sure that we try to address things prior to putting it on the market. So if, if there is a new roof, for example, it can add value as part of the sale. Sometimes buyers have home inspections and the inspector will say, you know what, this I'm I'm concerned about the age of the life of this roof, or I see damage, you know, because the inspector actually would get up on the roof, whereas, you know, I'm I'm observing everything from the ground. So if somebody had, you know, is buying a home, and their home and they're concerned about the roof, and they would like a roof inspection, and the home and the seller is is open to having a roofing contractor come up on that, is that something that you and your company would would do for a, a prospective buyer as part of their purchase. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. We we offer free inspections with uh, with our company. Uh, we'd be happy to come on and take a look at any house. Uh, if uh, other real estate agents are interested in having us take a look, just a non biased. You know, even if uh, we don't have to do any replacements, we we're happy to always take a look at the houses. We're really surprised at how many houses uh, have uh, the roofs are hail damaged, and uh, mm -hmm. most people don't even know about it. So. A lot of older homes, let's say even, uh, I don't know, 12, 15 year old roofs. It doesn't seem that old, but it, some of them are damaged and uh, it, it definitely needs to be addressed. So it's uh, it's definitely a good idea to have a, a contractor take a look at it. We'd be happy to do it. Uh, we'll leave our information down. Uh, we'll send it over to John. And, uh, yeah, we'll be happy to help anybody out. We'll write up a full report. We'll include the photos uh, if, it, if it's needed for the sale or the purchase agreement. And uh, we'll, yeah, we can we can help out with the insurance company side as well. That's wonderful. So you could work with a buyer on their purchase. Uh, you could work with the seller on a pre pre sale basis. Uh, you can work with people after they own their home and uh, they discover or they think that there might be have been storm damage. They start to see or get phone calls from our mailers. Uh, so you're kind of an unbiased opinion. Obviously, you'd be the one that would do the work if you came out. 
but uh, you, you, there's no cost to have you associated with taking a look. And so there's no harm in contacting you. Um, okay. Actually, it's beneficial because the worst case is you come out and you say everything's perfect. And then if a, if a buyer, let's say I'm a seller, if a buyer is then having a home inspection and the inspector says, well, I don't know about that roof, the seller could at that time say, well, actually, I do know about that roof. And yep. just a month ago, I had a guy come out, I've got a written report and you know what, you guys are good to go. There is no claim here. Or I would have made it. So yep. um, I can't really see why anybody wouldn't want to contact you uh, to at least explore the condition of the roof. Oh, it's definitely a good idea. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And we'd be happy to do it anytime. Uh, our, our schedule is relatively flexible, so we can usually get out within a couple of days. If it's an emergency situation, we have the tarps ready to go. If we have to tarp something or cover the roofs, we can come out the same day, generally. So, yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Well, Artem, uh, is there anything else you'd like to share with us today? Uh, I think that's about it. As far as, uh, you know, the only other thing that we may want to mention is uh, tips on like picking the contractor. You know, right now sure. after the storms we've had down south in Lonsdale and Elko, there's a lot of out of state contractors. So um, it's a good idea. Like you, you were just asking me, it's a good idea to find out what kind of materials they're using, uh, if they're if they're local or not. That's a big one too. And then uh, double checking the name of the contractor or somebody who owns the business. Uh, ask if the salesperson comes to your door and they're talking about the company and so on. Just ask if they know who the owner is and then try to look up and see whether that correlates with, uh, you know, who's actually registered to the license. So doing the background check on the contractors, especially right now with a lot of out-of-state guys, that's a really good idea. So uh, that's that's one of the tips. And then um, staying away from uh, storm chasers that are offering to cover deductibles. The rule of thumb is basically if they're willing to kind of bend the rules and cover deductibles outright and pay, you know, people money. The, they're willing to cut that corner. They're going to be willing to cut a lot of corners during the uh, process, the re-roofing process. So it's not going to be just that portion, like they 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 help they helped you out, they gave you some money or something, or they covered the cost out of pocket. Uh, it's most likely going to they're going to cut corners somewhere else as far as saving costs or increasing their profit margins. Sure. Uh, also, another thing is uh, asking whether the company does repair services. Uh, that's uh, that's a big one. A lot of uh, the roofing industry contractors they don't perform repairs. They you know, prefer to do full replacements only because it's a, you know more profitable project and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, but if they don't do repairs, if they don't you know come out uh, you know within a couple of days or if it's an emergency the same day, it's it's really tough to uh, if you do have an issue, it's really tough to get them out. If they're only doing full roof replacements, they don't have a special team that does it. They don't have the guys who can come out and do it. Uh, they don't have you know time set aside for that specific things so that's uh, that's going to be a big one asking to make sure that they do repairs and then uh don't fall for the high pressure sales and then uh we don't usually recommend going with the lowest bid so a lot of the homeowners they try to get the you know multiple bids for the insurance company and then they submit them all and obviously the insurance company will pick the lowest bid uh it doesn't always turn out well so with uh, in our industry usually the contractors they they if they're trying to get business based on price they're probably going to be cutting corners again. So we're coming down to the mm -hmm. same. The quality is going to end up being lower, just like the cost. So uh, those are my tips. Uh, there's a really good channel on YouTube as well. It's called Roofing Insights. Uh, the owner of that channel, he's had a uh, roofing company for a few years, Stormgroup Roofing, and I learned a lot from him. So watching his videos on YouTube, it's, it's really informative, a lot of good information. He interviews a lot of uh, public adjusters, attorneys, uh, different builders. Uh, so it's really informative for the homeowners as well as you know business owners. So yeah, I would definitely recommend checking that out. All right, I have maybe one more question for you. So with regards sure. to that, there's no requirement. You mentioned about different contractors and different bids. If I'm a homeowner, I get to pick whomever I want. I don't have to go with, you know, Joe Blow. That's the low man on the totem pole uh, who I've never heard of. If I if I like you, I like your reviews, I like your work and your references, and I want to go with you, and you happen to be more expensive. It doesn't matter. The insurance company has to has to allow that to occur. Uh, right. that, that's correct, right? That's correct. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's uh, if the insurance company comes in and you know tries to squeeze in their own contractor or something or make a, have their contractor do the work. Most of the time, it's because the contractor is uh, working, uh, giving them a better deal, basically. So he's giving them a better price because the insurance company in turn gives them more work, so they're able to work uh, like make their profits based on the volume of work that they perform. So that's uh, that's kind of the you know the, their deal that they have going on, but it doesn't work out well for the other contractors because uh, then you know you, you start seeing competitions with different contractors. One tries to go lower and lower and lower, and then obviously the quality is going to go down, and eventually people are going to go out of business based on sure. that. Sure. 
So you you definitely want to make sure that if you pick that contractor, insurance company has to be aware of it. They, you, you have to know your rights again. Like I can't really discuss policy language specifically. It's not, sure. it's, I'm kind of walking the line here, but uh, you definitely have the right to choose your own contractor and then go with somebody you trust for sure. Perfect, perfect. Yeah. All right, well, wonderful. Well, Artem, uh, if you could tell us again, the name of your company, how a phone number, how they can reach you. I'm gonna put that information in the description of this video, but um, wonder if you can just verbalize a little bit of that information and then we'll sure. call it good for today. Yep, so uh, our company name is Foremost Exteriors. It's F-O-R-E-M-O-S-T, exteriors, plural. Uh, the website is www.foremostexteriors.com. Uh, take a look at our Instagram page. We upload a lot of our projects. We try to be transparent. We try to show everything. So Foremost Exteriors on Instagram, uh, we have a lot of documentation, a lot of photos, a lot of uh, you know ongoing jobs, so you can see how everything is done. Uh, and uh, yeah, if uh, any questions come up, my email is artem at foremostexteriors.com. That's A-R-T-E-M at foremostexteriors.com. And then a phone number for us is 952-495-5545. Beautiful. And you work out throughout the metro, throughout the Twin Cities, and even oh, like 50 miles out, outside of the metro, right? I mean, our, we drive a lot, yep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, no limit. We'll... Uh, I mean, as far as the, you know, the state borders, but you know, of course you have to have a license if you go to Wisconsin or something, but in Minnesota, yeah, we go pretty far. Perfect. Awesome. Awesome. Well, great to visit with you today, Artem. Um, I'm going to say goodbye for now and uh, give Artem a call if you need anything with regards to roofs. Thanks everybody. Thank you.